We left ancient city of Petra and hid into Wadi Rum Desert, a Mars-like landscape on planet Earth. It's a protected area and designated UNESCO World Heritage Site. We paid 40 dinars for the taxi from Petra to Bedouin Camp in Wadi Rum, where we stayed for a night. At the visitor center, we changed the taxi to the four-wheel drive jeep, which took us for a safari through the desert. The tour lasts for three, four hours, with the price depending on the number of the passengers in the car. We paid 80 dinars for two, and the driver took us to the most interesting landmarks and breathtaking viewpoints. Wadi Rum with its red sand and strange-shaped rock formations looks so alien that it's nicknamed the Valley of the Moon. It's a large area of 720 square kilometers, nearly as large as New York City. Wadi Rum is a Hollywood favorite for the film set on the Red Planet. So far it has served as the backdrop for many films like Transformers, Red Planet, Aladdin, Dune and of course a couple of Star Wars. Besides stunning desert landscape, Wadi Rum also boasts astounding cultural landscape. 25,000 petroglyphs, 20,000 inscriptions and 154 archaeological sites have been discovered within this place, tracing the evolution of human thought and the early development of the alphabet. Hazali Canyon opens up in a narrow fissure of about 100 meters length. Its inner walls are covered with Talmudic, Nabatian and Islamic inscriptions, as well as petroglyphs depicting humans and animals. The figures of humans holding bows and arrows, with animals like camel, ibex and horse, as well as symbols like lines and circles, offering a rare window into the long-term patterns of pastoral, agricultural and urban human activities here. Widespread inscriptions and archaeological remains illustrate that many humans of different cultures inhabited Wadi Rum as early as 12,000 years ago since prehistoric times and interacted the natural environment here. One of its famous inhabitants is the Tamut people, living here from at least the 8th century BC, which was a nomadic tribe related to the mysterious Nabatians and referred to as Arabs in the Quran. Currently, its inhabitants are mainly Bedouin. About several hundreds of them live in their goat-haired tents and concrete houses in the Rum village. The word Bedouin comes from the Arabic Badawi, meaning desert dweller. They are kind, hospitable people, always ready to offer a cup of tea. Despite being a desert, Vatirum is actually home to an array of wildlife and animal species that exist in a complex ecosystem. Grasses, wild flowers and small herbal plants can be also found dotted across the valley. Badirum has three well-known rock arches and little bridges, the smallest one. It's a landmark at the center of the red desert, where the sand color comes from the presence of iron oxide. The rock bridge is 4 meters above the rocks below and around 7 meters above the valley floor making it relatively easy to climb for visitors and offering some amazing 360 degrees panoramic views on the surrounding mountains. Desert animals can be seen at night due to the high temperature during the day. These include harex, wolf, jackal, hare and hedgehog. Birds can be spotted as well, including falcons and owls, and you will also see plenty of geckos and lizards. Snakes, spiders and scorpions are also part of ecosystem, but are not very commonly seen. Camels are also found in Wadi Rum, many of which are kept by the Bedouin people. The camel is the favorite animal of the Bedouins and a symbol of male pride. Camel racing is an important sport for the Bedouins, 
These races allow Bedouins to engage in male competition and establish manhood and power within the community. Exceptional combination of landforms and Wadi Rum is the result of a million years of ongoing evolution influenced by various factors, including various types of weathering and erosion associated with previous humid and later desert climates, tectonic activities and lithology. Umfrut Rock Bridge is one of the most photographed places in Wadi Rum. The bridge is about 15 meters up from the desert floor it's an impressive structure, a massive stone slab, balanced between the two tall peaks. It's a bit of a scramble to the top, up a smooth slope and a long rocky edge, but once you reach it, the views are even more impressive than from below. There are multiple hand and foot holes cut out of the rock that make climbing easier. These foot holes are not natural, but were made by Bedouin guides to aid tourists reach the bridge. The Bedouin inhabitants use this area for grazing livestock in the spring and themselves have little need for the footholds. Bedouins naturally have no fear of heights and are excellent climbers. One of the best moments of the day in Wadi Rum is sitting on the rock with a cup of black Bedouin tea and waiting for the breathtaking sunset. As the sun set over the Roland landscape, Wadi Rum lit up in different hues. Camping is the best way to enjoy a tranquil magic night in Wadi Rum. We stayed at Candles Camp, which offers few types of accommodation from budget to more luxury. The luxury tent includes a decent private bathroom, heating, and big windows with panoramic views on the surrounding desert. We paid for the tent 50 dinar, which includes dinner and breakfast. The food served in the camp was a traditionally cooked zap of meat and vegetables. It had been buried in the out underground hall, filled with flaming hot coals and covered with blankets and sand, cooking away for the whole day. We were gathered to watch as it was pulled out from the earth ready for our dinner in dining tent with a stove in the middle. After the dinner we were sitting by the fire enjoying sounds of the traditional Bedouin music. After having a breakfast, it's time to go to Aqaba, which is the last stop of our trip in Jordan, and where we booked for a night. Mm -hmm. 
If you enjoyed watching this video, I encourage you to subscribe, click like and hit notification bell button to get updated of the new releases.